In this video, I'm going to show you how you can combine drag and drop with fill in the blank to provide feedback for each item. Okay, let's get started here. So this video uh, is the inspiration of a couple of questions that I received from a few viewers. And first of all, I want to say I really encourage the viewers to ask questions. So I'm, you know, reaching out to the viewers of my channel, the subscribers, to go ahead and ask your Captivate questions. Uh, that's the best source uh, for me to come up with new videos to produce for you. If you don't ask any questions, you know, I, I don't necessarily know what you'd like to see. So please, uh, you know, either in the comments below of the videos or you can reach out to me through various social media means. Um, probably the comments in the videos are the best way because I, I do read them and I try to respond to every single one. So this comes from two different viewers. The first viewer said, you know, would, wanted to see if the, there was a way that she could uh, provide individual feedback for fill in the blank questions that had multiple blanks that needed to be filled in. So, you know, again, if you had uh, a series of fill in the blanks, like I've set up here with this example uh, of a Robert Frost poem or part of the poem, and, uh, you know, but wanting to get feedback, not just for the whole thing, but for each drag and or for each fill in the blank. And another viewer was saying, can you do fill in the blank with a drag and drop? Could you drag and drop into the uh, blank spots of the um, of the paragraph of text and get feedback that way? So I'm combining both solutions or I've got one solution that combines both questions or hopefully answers both questions. So like I said, I've taken an excerpt from Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken, and I've put in a couple of blanks here. And um, all I've really done is I've created um, three different draggable objects and blank versions of those same draggable objects. And, you know, the alignment, you, you probably have to play with it a little bit. And, of course, if you're doing it responsive, probably have to spend a little extra time making sure it lines up for all the different breakpoints. This might be a solution better suited for standard projects, but we'll see how it works anyway. So I've got all the elements here. Now, one thing I do want to draw attention to is... Uh, anytime you do drag and drop and anytime you start playing with some of the settings, I think it's really important that you label everything. So you can see here that rather than smart shape number 1622, I'm calling this roads travel down. So it's very clear to me what I'm working with. Same thing with the drop targets. I went drop underscore roads, drop underscore travel drop underscore down and just in keeping with the best practice I even called this poem. So let's get started. We'll uh, begin by clicking the insert drop down menu and selecting launch drag and drop interaction wizard. And this brings us obviously the interaction wizard for drag and drop. The first thing we need to do is we need to select all of our draggable items. Incidentally, you could have also put some distractors in here, um, but I'm not going to do that in this case. Um, hit next, and we'll select the drop targets for those. Hit next, and now, of course, we need to identify the relationship between the draggable items and the drop targets. And, of course, it's giving us our success caption. Uh, but, of course, only one success caption. We, we need three. So we're going to do some changes in a moment here. So I'm going to hit Finish. So I'm back here. For the time being, uh, to make this easy and less confusing for me, I'm actually going to make the poem uh, not visible on my stage so I can see clearly what I need to accomplish. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get rid of the standard success and failure captions. 
So if we uh, simply go to the Actions tab of the drag and drop um, properties inspector, uh, you can see here there's my failure caption and there's my success caption. So I'm going to uncheck those. And of course, while you're on this particular tab, you could uh, make other changes too, like have it auto submit correct answers, um, which I, I don't think I would necessarily do. Uh, you can decide that on success, uh, do you want to continue or go to next slide? I'm going to set this up to um, continue, or sorry, go to next slide, and that's fine. And failure, we're just going to leave it continue. That's fine because I want them to get this right before they move on. Um, because the submit button is kind of extraneous at this point because they'll have already gotten feedback for each of these items, I can actually relabel that. I'm going to call it something different. So I'm going to go to the Properties Inspector for the Submit button and just type Next. So um, again, we have everything here. The one thing we need to do is replace those captions. So let's start off with the Drop Targets for Roads. Now if we go back to the Drag and Drop Property Inspector under the Format tab, you'll see an option uh, or a button rather called object actions and this is going to determine what the actions are for this particular object and what it will accept and what it won't accept and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just moving this down here. I'm going to uncheck accept all because I only want it to accept one thing. I'm going to hit replace and I'm going to uncheck the drag source type and we're only going to accept the roads box. Then that's set up. Now I can do the same thing here. And we're going to go to Object Actions. We're going to uncheck Accept All. We're going to replace. We're going to uncheck all the items. And let's see, which one am I working with now? Travel. We'll check that one off. Same thing here. Object actions. Uncheck accept all. Replace. And I believe it's down. Is that right? Yes. Click OK. That's done. The only other thing I need to add to all of these, and I can do it all at the same time, selecting all of the drop targets. I'm going to change the anchor position to the upper left hand corner. Shouldn't be a problem anyway, but just as a precaution. And I'm going to display an on accept and an on reject. So now I have um, a caption for each of these. Now this particular theme is not really separating out the uh, failure from the uh, success as far as appearance is concerned but uh, let's let's set that up so here's the failure message and we'll just type in incorrect and the failure for this one here is sorry that's wrong and the failure for this guy down here is um, not exactly not even close to exactly and I'm just going to change these a little bit. We're going to make the text white. And we're also going to change the color to red. Right, so it really stands out that no, that's not the correct answer. And uh, we'll put our success caption. We'll do something similar. Um, fantastic work. Um, absolutely well done. So again, I'm just going to change the appearance of those a little bit. We're going to just make the text white on those. And I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's put that poem back in and just see how everything lines up here. Um, I just think, let me just type in 
roads. That looks like it lines up well. Um, but you may have to play around with the alignment. The one thing I think I want to do actually, because I don't want to block the poem and make it difficult for users to complete this, I think I'll just move the captions down below here so they're out of the way. So I think we're pretty good. We've got uh, everything that we need to accomplish this. Let's do a preview and see how it runs. So there we go. We've got our uh, instructions at the top there. Drag and drop the correct words to complete the blank spots in the excerpt from the following poem. The road not taken by Robert Frost. Two blank diverged in a yellow wood. Well, which is it going to be? Uh, let's try road seems to make sense. And again, I think my alignment needs to work. I saw that fantastic caption down there. Sorry, I could not. Let's get it wrong this time. Sorry, that's wrong. You see, I snapped it back there. It won't accept that answer. I could, you know, no matter how many times I try, it won't let me do that one. So let's try this one. Travel, absolutely. And finally, and look down one as far as I could. So we'd have to play with the alignment. It looks like if I lowered the poem by three or four pixels, I'd probably have it spot on. And even though this is actually a submit button, it's very appropriate that it be a next button at this point, and then I continue with the course. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was cool, interesting, useful, helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.